Welcome to tutorial 2 on how to use Speech2Text Basic. Here the um, focus will be on explaining the function of every button in the app and um, I will address the buttons in uh, descending order of importance. So let me begin with uh, settings. This is where the uh, language of speech recognition can be set and um, if you have more than one language is appearing on this list always be sure that the uh, correct language is selected before beginning your speech recognition session which you can start by clicking the microphone button delete last sentence so there has to be a match between the language of speech recognition uh, selected here and the language that you are going to be using during your content generation sessions. And of course this um, this is significant if there is more than one language on this drop-down. And by the way, the languages that appear here are the ones corresponding, they correspond to the language packs that you have installed in your Windows 10 system and that support speech recognition. This is what you see here. So if you have more than one such languages installed, ensure that the correct one is selected before beginning your speech recognition. Uh, however, if you're only going to be using one language, even though many appear on this list, you don't have to keep checking back because the app remembers the most recently selected language and uh, preserves that language when it is shut down and um, sets it as a default once it's relaunched. The only time you have to keep checking back is when you use more than one such language, uh, meaning that you switch back and forth between, let's say, English and Spanish. So if your lastly selected language was Spanish, when you shut down the app, when you relaunch it and you plan on speaking in English, um, ensure that English is selected and not Spanish because if there is a mismatch, whenever there is a mismatch, the result will not be very good, as you can see from this. Delete last sentence. Whenever there is a mismatch, the result will not be very good. Okay. Now, we got the expected result. Delete last sentence. So, um, I explained settings and also microphone. Let's, let me actually um, uh, offer an explanation on commands. Speech Text Basic offers about 40 voice commands and uh, as you can see they are Oops, what happened? I'm sorry, I have to shut down and restart the app. So as mentioned, Speech Text Basic offers about 40 voice commands and uh, they are grouped under category titles for better organization. And um, if you want to learn about a specific voice command, some are quite intuitive based on the name, but if you want to learn more about, a, about the rules of a specific voice command, there's a couple of ways offered. One is to click the microphone button and to read this the short description that appears on this uh, pop-up. But a better learning aid is to click the play Don't button. Read everything. And to watch Millions the demo. of people throughout the world have improved their lives with this self-help classic period. Select millions of people. Select improved their lives. Delete last sentence. So, um, okay. Now the name of a voice command is editable. So if you wanted to invoke this voice command using a different word, for example, choose, you could simply type choose in place of select. Once you do this, this is going to add choose or the newly added 
the new name as a keyword that is associated with this voice command and select is still there. So now there's two different ways to invoke this voice command. There's select and there's choose. And uh, you can in fact add more keywords. For example, you could add highlight. It doesn't even have to be a single word, it can be a phrase. For example, do me a favor and select. So now there's four different, al there's four alternate ways of invoking this voice command. Okay, let's do an experiment and to confirm that they work. I like Monday, comma, Tuesday, comma, Wednesday, comma, and Thursday, exclamation mark. Select Monday, comma, highlight Tuesday, comma, do me a favor and select Wednesday, comma, Choose Thursday, exclamation mark. Select Monday, comma, Tuesday. Do me a favor and select Tuesday, comma, Wednesday. Okay. Now, if you want to change the name of the voice command, you can, of course, because this option is offered. But an alternative is to simply add a keyword to the existing name. So um, let's go back to select now. Now, if I try to type select here, it would not let me, I think, because select already exists as a keyword. So what I would have to do is delete select and type select now. And this would also, this would add the keyword select or assign it to this voice command and restore the name back to select. Okay. Another important application of using keywords is accuracy. And uh, for that, let me go to a specific voice command. Delete last sentence. And uh, let's let me use the search search box because I want to go to the acronymize command. Now, acronymize is probably a word. It is a legitimate word of the uh, English vocabulary, but it's not a very common one. And sometimes the speech recognizer does not recognize it as a word and thinks that it's two different words or two. Um, it, it thinks it's two words that comprise acronymize and let me show you what I mean. My email client does not use SMTP or IMAP protocol. Acronymize SMTP. So I wanted to acronymize this word here, this uh, acronym. However, when I said acronymize, the recognizer heard or interpreted acronymize, which is one word, as two words. What I would do in this case is I would simply copy this using copy and go to acronymize and add it as a keyword, okay? Undo. Acronymize SMTP. Acronymize IMAP. I don't know if you caught that, but on the status bar, it actually showed this newly entered keyword. So in other words, uh, my pronouncing acronymize was registered as this version of the, um, of the keyword or of, of the command, okay? But because I entered it as a keyword, it was a hit. It was not a miss, okay? 
In other words, it executed the voice command instead of printing um, the statement. So accuracy is a, a very common use reason to enter, you know, alternate keywords to an existing voice command. Um, let's also do uh, let's do uppercase. Okay, this converts um, a segment of text to all upper upper caps. Okay, and uh, the keyword is as one word. Okay, so it's uppercase. It's uppercase as one word. Let me try to uppercase something within the sentence. Uppercase my email client. This didn't work. So instead of getting this phrase here, these words, uppercased, I got it to print literally what I pronounced because the recognizer thought I said uppercase as two words as opposed to one, one word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what the recognizer heard, which is uppercase as two words. and enter that as a keyword and assign it to uppercase, to the uppercase voice command. Undo. Uppercase my email client. Okay, 